Hi everyone, it's Kelly here for Soy and Shay, and thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I am going to do something a little bit different. I am going to take you outside and I'm going to show you what the inspiration was behind today's soap. Let's go and take a look. Okay, so here is the inspiration for today's soap. This is a cotton bush. In my front yard, I've got three of them growing and in the back, I think there's about five or six of them. And uh, my mum actually grew them from seed and gave them to me to plant in the garden because I absolutely love the cotton bush. I think it's the most fascinating plant out there. Um, what we've got down here, we've got a flower that looks like it's gonna open up sometime later on today. They open up in these really nice yellowy, creamy sort of color. And then once they're finished for the day and they close up, they get this really dark pink tinge to them. Now once they have closed up, providing they have been pollinated, in the bottom of them, let's see if we can get this one open here, there is this little ball and it is rock hard, like a little rock. And it will actually grow into something a little bit bigger. We've got one down here. This one is growing here and you can see it's much bigger starting to poke out from behind its leaves and when you actually touch it, it is absolutely solid. But what I'll do is I'll take you to the ones in my backyard because they are doing something really fun. So these are all the cotton plants in the backyard. They're a little bit smaller than the ones in the front because they're in a smaller garden bed here. I can see I do have another one that is opened up there, so we'll get another cotton ball off that one. And I can see if we come around the side here, we have actually got some, which after they get nice and hard, let's get into the back here, they actually burst open into cotton balls. So there's another one there. They're a little bit grubby because we have had a lot of rain, so cotton and rain just don't go well. You can see this one here is getting ready to burst open soon. You can actually see the cotton inside that ball. And we've got lots of others here which look like they're gonna burst open too. So that out there is the plant that has inspired today's design of this soap. So those really nice green colours mixed in with that deep pink on the creamy coloured flowers. And then the cotton bowl that comes out, and that is the correct pronunciation, a bowl, B-O-L-L. -L, um, they come out with that sort of brown shell on them when they are ready, even though the rest of the plant is fully alive and green. So I hope you've enjoyed that little snippet of my garden, but for now what we're going to go and do is see how I make my cotton blossom soap. Let's go. All right, let's get started. As we always do, I have got my oils in my container down to room temperature here, and I've got my sodium hydroxide and distilled water solution. Just gonna bring them together to a very light emulsion, and then we're gonna split it up for the colors and add our fragrance. colors today into my little pot here we have got some titanium dioxide which is being dispersed in some water I'm gonna pour off a good amount in there I'm not gonna add any fragrance into my white so I'm not too worried if it's a bit full into this pot here I have got some blush pink mica and this is from my micro obsession pour about half a cup into that one and into my big bucket we're going to make a green base soap today this is some jade mica it's a really nice pale sort of green and I don't want my soap too strong in color today let's just get that bit off that's got the bit of pink let's get these colors all mixed in first of all we'll do the white so let's pull that one out We are all mixed in. Hopefully we are not going to need this stick blender anymore. So let's get it all cleaned off. 
Okay, so now that's all stirred in, we are going to try another one of those Elux or Ilux fragrances. Really not sure how she pronounces her business name. Um, this one is called Cotton Blossom. You can see it is actually quite yellow in colour. It says the vanillin is to be advised. So I'm not going to actually add it into the white just simply because that is so dark and I want that to stay nice and white. So we'll just add it to our green and pink. It's got notes of bergamot, rice, jasmine, rose, vanilla and musk. And it really does smell like a clean cotton fragrance now the last time i used clean cotton which i had from aroma it behaved beautifully so i'm hoping that this one does too it smells really good that is one thing i will say about these fragrances they are very strong um, when you actually look at the usage rates for these fragrances online it says three percent in um, soap, bath oil and there's something else. There's three different things that it says 3%. So I'm actually thinking when it says 3% it means it's 3% of the total weight of the soap and not the total weight of oils which is generally um, the sort of amounts that we're looking at. So when I actually calculated that into my recipe 3% of my total oil weight is actually equal to 4.5% of my sorry 3% of my soap weight is equates to 4.5% of my oil weight so that's what I am using in the soap and it is oh it's behaving beautifully so before we jinx ourselves too much more I am going to try again my little theory on the curly whirly swirl this time we have got some of that titanium dioxide so we'll see what sort of curls we get and because it's a lot more fluid as well it should be beautiful but what I'm actually going to do with this one rather than doing two separate drops pours with this I am going to be pouring these two I want more of the pink and I actually want to save back some of this white for some piping afterwards so we'll keep yeah about that much pour the rest of this pink in here all right so here is my mold so here is my theory I'm going to pour in some of my green in here leaving back a fair amount of the green because I think these curly whirlies actually really come about from a downward force into the soap and that's what creates them to go nice and curly we're going to drop in our pink and white like so and get all that scraped out because I don't want to save any what I am going to do because I'm going to pour this out quite fast I actually want to save some of this green back for some piping on the top so I'm going to pour some of that out so I don't miss how much I need I have poured some of my green out for some piping and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the rest of this green and I'm going to pour it in quite high and quick. And I think that is what actually creates those drop swirls. And it's to do with how fluid it is, how quick you move and things like that. So hopefully we'll get a few of those curly whirlies. And then I can actually show you this type of swirl that I'm after. I had so many people after my last video contact me about the type of swirl. Um, and although everyone sent me such pretty designs in soaps, they're not the type of swirls that I'm trying to work out how to achieve. Hopefully we'll get some in here so I can show you. But the ones that I'm trying to achieve are the ones that look like spirals in the soap. And um, I just find them so pretty and fascinating in soap. So I'm really hoping we get some in here and we're on to something with how to actually purposely create them rather than them just happening upon our soaps. You get this completely scraped down. So here are the embeds that we're going to put on the top of the soap here. So we've got our little cotton blossom flowers, so white with that tinge of pink as they go just before they turn over after their day of flowering. And these are actually meant to look like little, little cotton bowls. They didn't quite work out the way I wanted them to, but they're still pretty cute. So I'm going to pop them onto our soap here. I am going to take my gloves off because I do find it much easier to put these um, embeds on without the gloves. These were actually piped out yesterday, so they are perfectly fine for me to actually 
handle and I'm going to put at least one cotton blossom onto every one of these. I'm going to pick out sort of the best ones <laughs> that I did on here. Um, they really weren't working out quite as I wanted them to. The titanium dioxide set up a lot quicker than what the brown did on me and then all of a sudden I was trying to do piping with this leaf tip and it was the size I actually wanted and I just could not get them to pipe nicely. I'll see if we can find one of the ones, I don't think I can see, I think I ended up getting rid of it, but one of them, I think this one here, you can see it's got like lots of pokey bits on it rather than actual leaves like this one here and I was getting so frustrated with it and when I actually looked I discovered the piping tip I picked up it was one of these that I'd had out of a a D stash box thing years ago and it was a no name cheap piping tool from off of I'd imagine eBay or something like that and it was just awful it would not pipe at all so I ended up having to take that tip out and actually going with a slightly smaller leaf and then all of a sudden I was able to um, here's one of the ones you can see it's just absolutely terrible none of the leaves held their their shape at all so I ended up getting rid of the the piping tip because it just was not working so let's get these little cotton balls onto the top now I am saying it funny because it is actually it's we call them cotton balls in the when you get cotton things to go into your bathroom but on the plant they're called cotton balls and it's b-o-l or b-o-l-l-s is the little puffs of cotton that you get from off the plant. Now I was really inspired to actually have a go at making um, a soap based off the cotton plant because I find these plants absolutely fascinating. When I lived out in Uluru, which is for those of you that don't know the traditional name, it is Ayers Rock, so right out in the middle of Australia. I lived there for about eight months and worked out there as well. I remember getting up one morning to go to work and I was walking along. I knew there'd been a massive party the night before in the sort of staff compound area. And um, I was walking along and I was passing all these bushes and I'm thinking, oh my God, they've gone out during the, their partying, their, their drunken little party, and they've put cotton balls all through these trees and then as I was walking past these bushes there's all these what look like little cotton balls um, sticking on them. I think oh my goodness this is going to take forever to clean up we're going to get into serious trouble that someone's gone around putting cotton into the, the plants um, you know the gardeners are not going to be happy and they were still there you know a week later and I eventually realized that they were actually cotton plants and I'd never ever seen a cotton plant in my life before now I know cotton comes off trees and you know I know peas don't come out the freezer and all that sort of thing but I'd never seen a cotton tree in my life and it was just so fascinating to see this bush with lots of little cotton sticking on it and then we've got some places um, around or in Queensland that actually do grow the cotton and my mum was up there and she was told that the way you can grow them is if you've ever had any of the dried cotton which we both have some you take the seeds out of the cotton and then you can grow them so she decided with her dried cotton that she'd pull those seeds out and she planted them and we ended up well I've got three bushes in the front yard and then in my backyard I think I have about six Five or, yeah, it must be about six little cotton bushes out there. They've all got little, they've all been flowering like mad. All have the start of little cotton balls on them as well. So I'm going to be really excited. Hers are actually already throwing the little cotton poofs out. So it's really quite cute to watch them. These here, so these are to represent the flowers. When the flowers come out, they do come out this beautiful creamy white colour. And then they 
flower all day long and then by the next day they generally have all closed up and they're this bright vivid pink on the edge of them really really fascinating plant they are so I'm just popping my little cotton flowers on the top here so it looks like we've got a mix of cotton flowers and the little cotton balls all in bloom now normally like when they do actually come out on the bush they my mums that have come out do actually have green leaves behind them but whenever you get them as a dried flower arrangement they are actually a brown color from where they've all dried out i've made these too big to fit in the soap here so that's a small one we might have to grab a knife and cut some of these down so we can get more onto the soaps So I'm going to leave it at that so we're not overloading it too much. I am going to get these two into some piping bags and then we're going to finish off the top of this soap. So here it is, this is Cotton Blossom. I am absolutely loving how that has come together. It is so pretty and that biodegradable glitter I've just sprinkled on the top really makes it shine. I'm probably gonna leave this for about 48 hours before I cut it just simply because the Cotton Blossom has made this go so fluid and it has taken so long to actually set up. I think it's gonna need that little bit of extra time in the mold to really firm up. So I'm gonna leave this one sit and we'll be back in just a moment and we'll cut it open and see if we manage to get any curly whirly swirls in this one so we are back to cut into cotton blossom and I am absolutely loving it the glitter is gorgeous really finishes it off it has been sitting here for 48 hours so like I said it's still quite tacky though so I think that's a lot to do with the fragrance because it did behave so well but we're going to get it cut and then we can get it drying and out onto the rack so I've got that all lined up just cutting off a bit off the end because I have damaged it getting it out of the mold because it was so soft it just didn't want to release but we are almost all the way through and we're going to take a look all right so let's take a look in here grab this one there is the top we've got some little um, cotton blossoms and the little cotton ball and that is the inside I absolutely love how that has come together it has the colors have just swirled together beautifully love that pink against that jade green it's quite funny I was actually went into the house on Saturday night after making this one and um, I was sitting and watching one of Lee's videos um, she did one lime and she used this jade mica as well she put a little bit of titanium dioxide in it um, and it just is such a beautiful color and even with the titanium dioxide it came out beautiful as well really really like this particular color and that is the top of that one loving those swirls in there doesn't look like we got any curly whirlies in this one so maybe my theory is not right I'm going to keep working on it though but I am absolutely loving how wispy all those colors are in there and it just reminds me of the um, cotton blossom bush or the cotton bushes out in the garden we've got rain today it's only about 22 degrees today so it's um, absolutely lovely getting lots of work done without sweating too much makes a lovely change I think autumn's definitely on its way from our weather this week we've got this is the coldest day at 22 and then we're going to have some days at 26 and 27 so it's going to be a lovely week for working I love how that has all just 
wiggled on through it's like one continuous color has gone all the way through there in fact that's done this big loop of white in there really really happy with how this soap has come up so I hope you have enjoyed oh look I was gonna say bye but look 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 we've got a curly whirly <laughs> right in there I've got a little curly whirly and that's another one starting to form as well the back of the soap's not too interesting there but we've got almost got one in there so that's just made my day let's have a look at this one this one's getting a few few more little curlies not quite as um, pronounced as I want them to be that's got like I don't know if the camera is really gonna focus on it very well but it looks like little tree rings in there Oh, that's awesome and we have got some curly whirlies in there so maybe it's just a matter of finding the right amount of soap to pour each time and then the amount of force that you need to get these sort of curls to come up oh I'm so pleased I managed to get some in here oh that's so exciting so as I was about to say I hope you have enjoyed watching how I made cotton blossom soap with some curly whirly swirls in there. If you did why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below and until the next video comes out I hope you have a great one and I will see you then. Bye!